Welcome to video three. In this video, we're going to look at what to do with the dagger in your lunge drills. Now in the Northern Italian system, the dagger is generally a supporting tool. It is not the primary, the sword is still primary. So everything we've learned in videos one and two still holds true. All we're doing now is looking at what do you do with this offhand when you've got this supporting tool in it. Um, what follows is by no means comprehensive. I just want to give you some ideas and some ways to think through using the dagger so that you can employ it and create your own drills down the road. Let's start with how to hold the dagger in stance and in your lunge. So what you want to do with the dagger, how you hold it, and where you hold it is dictated by your tactics, by what you're trying to accomplish. I don't want to go into too much detail here. Um, I just taught a 10 week virtual class uh, on the Northern Italian rapier and dagger. I'll put the link in the description. If you're interested, you can go sign up and do a self led version of that class where you're watching the videos and you're learning, but there's no instructor guidance going on. But I'll show you my default and I'll show you some basics throughout this video on how to think about using the dagger. So my default, in terza, I'm pointing my sword at my opponent. I point my dagger about a quarter to a third of the way up my sword. So I'm not pointing both at my opponent because this exposes my thumb. It gives a good channel that my opponent can ride right up in between my sword and dagger. So I'm creating this, this V shape, my sword pointing at my opponent, my dagger pointing at my sword, I'm protected on that side. I'm protected on this side. My guard is protecting my hand. My blade is protecting my thumb. And the thing that's pointing at my opponent is this place in between my blade and my guard. This, the middle of this V is what I'm pointing at my opponent. So I line up, I bring my hand up, maybe over, maybe under, maybe at my blade, but I'm still creating this V shape. So when I'm working through my lunge, here's what I do with the dagger. So we're in Terza. I'm aiming at my blade. When I lift my sword, my dagger tends to follow it a little bit as well. I, I keep pointing, I keep that V. Um, as I hinge at the hips, again, same idea. I'm still pointing at my sword. Now, often at this point, I'm starting to do some kind of tactic. So this is where my dagger will start wandering a little bit more opening holes, closing holes, etc. But for right now, the default, I'm just gonna say you lift the sword, the dagger tracks it, you hinge at the hips, your dagger's still tracking it. Now the rest of this video is gonna be looking closely at what happens next, what happens in the third part of the lunge, um, how you can employ the dagger to block lines, to uh, close holes, to create walls and all that. So in scenario one, I'm approaching my opponent and I'm constraining their sword on the inside in fourth, in quarta. My opponent doesn't like that. They come around my sword and they hit my open shoulder. So without the dagger, I approach, I threaten, and they strike my shoulder. So I wanna use the dagger to keep that strike from happening. So with the dagger, again, I'm pointing at my blade I threaten my opponent, I go into my quarta posture, he cavatillones, I pick it up, and I finish my lunge. So what that might look like in a solo drill would be something like this. I'm approaching in terza, I approach into measure. As I lift my sword arm, I'm canting it a little toward fourth. This pulls me into a full quarta, canted more and forth. Then when I finish this lunge, my hand stays in fourth, my dagger goes over my arm. So you do those parts, just like we did in the earlier videos, and then you smooth it out little by little. Approach, arm, quarta, lunge. So in this scenario, I'm approaching my opponent on the outside. So I'm gonna to try to constrain the blade 
by moving my hand into second, into seconda, which of course pulls my body forward, and then they're going to do the disengage, the cavatione, under my blade and strike me in my open chest. So without the dagger, that looks like move forward, constrain and threaten, and then he takes this opening. So what I want to do in this case is to stop that disengage from happening at all. So I am going to approach with my dagger at the ready, constrain, threaten with the posture, and as his blade starts coming around, I'm dropping my dagger to stop it from coming all the way around and finishing the lunge. So the solo drill for this one might look something like this. We start in our terza. We approach into measure. As we lift the sword arm, we're canting it into second, pulls us into seconda. Then we move into that uh, wall of steel by dropping the dagger point down in the thrust. So the thing to note about this one is there's virtually no pause or even no pause between going from seconda to the final part of the lunge. You want to work up to a very smooth version of that where you're going from terza, measure, lift, seconda, and that all in one motion. You're trying to stop that disengage from happening. You're not letting it happen and then reacting to it. So as soon as you've triggered that disengage with this full seconda, you want to then keep rolling immediately to stop them from getting under your sword. This scenario is similar to the last one, except I'm going to let my opponent come all the way around my blade and then pick him up on my inside line instead of stopping him dead. So again, without the dagger, what that would look like is approaching from the outside, constraining my opponent's blade, moving into the threatening posture, and my opponent strikes me at the center. With the dagger added in, I need to marry the two pretty close together. So I approach, I constrain, I move into my posture, and then I just have to extend my dagger straight out and keep my thrust happening, and he runs right onto it. So in this one, the approach and the threat are the same as the last one. But this time we are letting them do the disengage, the cavatione under my blade, and I'm gonna catch them on my inside line. So there could be a slight pause between seconda and finishing the lunge. So we would start in terza, move into measure, lift the arm, canting the blade slightly in second, pulls you forward into seconda, then as they come around your blade, you extend your dagger arm and finish your lunge. Now, one of the things to make sure of here is that your dagger is very close to maybe even slightly crossing over your sword blade. You don't want to give them any kind of a gap to be very subtle about their disengage and come in on you. So I set up in terza. I make sure that my point is close to my blade here my dagger point and my sword blade, move in, threaten, move into seconda, and then I finish here. And you can, of course, just, as I mentioned, use the dagger as a backup. So in this particular case, I'm just going to show what that might look like uh, as you're practicing your regular lunges. So I'm going to close on my opponent in quarta, force the cavatione, and I'm going to go ahead and act as if I'm a single sword, rolling into seconda to pick it up and thrust, but I'm going to keep that dagger somewhere around my sword as a backup. So what that would look like is moving in, threatening my opponent, gaining their blade in a slight quarta, moving into my posture, my opponent disengages, I roll in the seconda, and I thrust and I'm just going to keep my dagger somewhere out here in case I mess up or he does something I don't want him to do. So all I want you to think about, or all I'm trying to get at with this one is, as you continue to use your sword as your offense and defense, 
what do you do with your dagger? You don't want to just forget about it and let it sag and let it hang back. You still want to keep it engaged as the backup tool. So that might look like I'm closing on an opponent in fourth, threatening them in quarta, and I'm going to pick them up in seconda as they roll under my blade. I'm still going to keep my dagger forward and engaged as I finish that lunge. I'm going to keep it out here. But what does that mean? So for me, often I'm just here. I'm just hovering somewhere, keeping the V. Uh, but you might want to go over your arm and just kind of hover hand over hand. You might want to let it sag a little bit under your sword so you're still creating a bit of a wall. Play with different options. One thing to work on when you are thrusting in quarta is what to do with the dagger. If I have gained my opponent and I am sure that I have gained and am thrusting in quarta with no problems, the manuals will often show pulling the dagger out of the way, maybe even going into a full uh, uh, profile lunge to get more reach. So what I want to do in quarta is to make sure that my dagger isn't getting in the way of my sword when I need to move it across my body. So what that might look like is I approach, I'm gaining in fourth, I extend, I've picked him up. So as I go into my full extension, I will either profile my body and get my dagger out of the way, or maybe I'll keep my shoulder a little forward and I'm gonna keep my dagger out in front of me just in case something bad happens. So again, the point here is what do I do with my dagger when I'm lunging all the way across my body in quarta, in a quarta lunge. Um, if I'm not going to be engaging, if I'm not actually picking something up, I don't want my dagger to get into the way of my sword. So what you'll find, what you'll see me doing, I approach in terza, I lift a little bit in fourth, I come into quarta. Now, as you notice, as I'm coming into quarta, I'm already kind of holding my dagger back a little bit, getting it out of the way of my hilt. So as I finish this lunge, I can throw my dagger back and get the profile a little more, or I can go over my sword, which is what I tend to prefer, is keeping it out here in front somewhere, just out of the way. Practice your different options. Practice going under the sword. Practice keeping out in front. Practice going in profile. But practice different things so that you're not fouling your own sword against your dagger. Sometimes, when you're thrusting in fourth, in quarto, you want the thrust at the head, so you want to get your arm up. So if you're wanting to still engage the dagger and use it for your defense, you will need to move your dagger under your arm in fourth instead of over like we did earlier. So for instance, what that might look like is without the dagger, I close in fourth, I move into quarta posture, he does his disengage, and I want to still thrust high. So I need to do this. Move in and forth, move in quarta to posture. He goes under my blade. I pick him up under my arm, keeping my hand in a high fourth to thrust for the head or neck. So in this one, I'm threatening in fourth. I'm trying to get them to Cavatione like we did earlier, but I'm threatening in a high fourth. So I can't and shouldn't roll my dagger over my arm because A, it's impractical and B, I'm opening a target down here for my opponents. So they're going to be coming down to my belly, my under my arm, lower chest. So this is to practice as you approach in terza, and as you lift your dagger and your sword, you want to be floating your dagger down a little bit lower so that when you go into your corte and your final lunge, your dagger's already prepared to pick up. So again, you move through the parts, you smooth it out, and this one you have planned out already. You know you're gonna go for a high fourth, so glide in the measure, threaten, go into your quarta, your dagger's floating somewhere around here, you don't want it over your arm now, you want it somewhere around here, so that when you finish this out, your dagger comes under your arm to pick them up. And finally, when you're playing in prima, and you're practicing a prima thrust, your dagger generally needs to be occupying the space here to defend you, uh, no matter which side they're coming in on. So what that might look like is I approach my opponent from the outside. I'm threatening in a second. I'm going to go into seconda, 
he's going to come under my blade. I'm not going to even try to engage with the blade anymore. I'm just going to roll into Prima and pick up with a crossbody dagger parry. So you will have noticed at this point that along with uh, preparing to close lines and make a steel wall, you are practicing getting your sword and dagger to work together and stay out of each other's way. And this last one is no exception. I close, I threaten in second, I go into seconda. For whatever reason, I'm rolling my hand into prima. That causes this body twist and my dagger then sweeps down to cover under my sword. So not a difficult thing, but something to practice nonetheless. You can also alter how high or low your prima goes. Close in terza, threaten in second, go into full seconda. Now I'm just gonna thrust straight out in prima, guarding low. So I can go high to get over maybe their dagger sweep or just go straight into their face in a prima. But in any case, my dagger is covering the area here in front of me. Then recover back. Okay, and that's it for this video. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is in no way comprehensive. This is meant to show you some ideas and to get you thinking about uh, how to break your own actions down and practice getting your sword and your dagger out of each other's way and keeping them effective. So think through the attacks you like to make or you want to make, and you can create your own drills with those, thinking through which line you're covering, which line you're opening up, uh, and how to make your sword and dagger work well together. I'm putting in the description of this video the links to two videos. One is a previous video I did on the offhand and the dagger. The other one is a link to my Tattershall class on the Northern Italian Rapier and Dagger system. Uh, feel free to sign up, do a self-led uh, version of the course uh, if you want to dig more into how Capafero Giganti looked at the dagger and employed it in their plays. All right, that's it for now. My final video upcoming soon will be things to think about when you're using a cloak and a sword. I hope this all was helpful. Everyone fight safely.